Hi, I'm Josh. And I'm Greg. And you're watching Freedom Free For All Television. Some of the things we like to talk about on our show are freedom. What liberty? What about justice? What about property rights? What about marijuana legalization? What about gold and silver? What about honest money? What about sovereignty? What about fiat currency? What about love? What about personal development? Leadership. If some of these things are interesting to you, tune in. We are on Freedom Free For All Television live every Monday night. Find us online. We are changevictoria.org. We'll see you there. Hi, I'm Greg Hill with WeAreChangeVictoria.org and Freedom Free For All TV. We're here at the BC Legislature in Victoria, British Columbia, Canada for the third edition of the March Against Monsanto. And there were about 350, 400 people here today uh, who actually gathered here on the legislature lawn. They were giving away free food, wholesome, nutritious food and drinks and we marched down uh, the, the main corridor of the downtown Victoria and it was incredible. So we're going to go talk to some people that are they're still around here. All right, so we're asking the public just some general questions. Why are you here today? <laughs> because I'm against GMOs and Monsanto, and I just want to be a part of the awareness. Why is it important for you to be a part of this? Uh, I want our food to be, GMOs have to be labeled. Uh, what what yeah. changes have you made in your life regarding uh, healthy food? Um, well, I've always eaten kind of healthy, but just try and go as organic and less processed as possible, for sure. Um, and your spending habits have changed? Like just being health, having healthy as a lifestyle is much more expensive, but it's definitely worth it for your body. Are there any favorite local shops that you like to go to? Um, not really. Lifestyles or Moss Street Market or anything made locally is really great, too. Yeah. So what brings you here today? Uh, I care about the food that I eat in terms of where it comes from and I think it's really important that we practice sustainable farming and food production. What did you like most about today? Uh, I think knowing that there are other people out there that feel the same way and want to make a difference is a really big part of it. But obviously it's great to you know march down the middle of the streets. <laughs> so you're here with a couple of friends today. Um, there, there must be other people in your life that uh, are aware of what's going on. Um, how, how has being involved in this um, inspired you? Um, just the amount of support and the amount of knowledge that can be spread about it is really inspiring. Um, it inspires me to see a lot of kids around here and families out uh, because that way we know that like they're going to be there in the future too and it inspires me to see that people in the sidewalks were also supporting and just the positive like feeling of everybody around here. And what changes have you made in your life since you became aware of what's happening on with GMOs? Um, I've definitely made a lot of changes in my life. I like try to eat almost nothing processed, nothing <laughs> what, like three months ago, um, nothing from Monsanto, really make some research and um, bug my mom about it a lot, way too much. But um, I think the most important thing is how you, what you do in your own house and that's where the change happens. Yeah. We're here with the organizer for the March Against Monsanto in Victoria. This is the third one, Laura Welby. Thank you so much for putting this together. We had an amazing day. Uh, what what got you excited to put this to, this event together? Well, uh, this is the third one I'm doing right now, and the, the fantastic turnout that we've had through the last two marches is inspiration for definitely for me to do it again. And so, how did you get in, introduced to this cause to begin with? 
Well, I, you know, I can't remember how it all started. I remember hearing about the March Against Monsanto and what a cocky bunch of people they were, and I thought they really needed to be put in their place. And uh, when I found out they didn't have an organizer here in uh, Victoria yet, then I, 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 I gave it, actually gave it some thought, and I blew it off at first, and then I found out my girlfriend had taken it over. So it was the two of us at first for a little bit, and then she left it in my lap. So I'm very happy to be doing it. So what is it about Monsanto that drove you to do this? Monsanto, the seeds of evil. Oh boy, I don't know. Where do you start with Monsanto? Um, their history, they go back so far. They were helped to create the atom bomb. They were helped to create uh, Agent Orange that was sprayed on all the Vietnamese people. They still suffer to this day. Uh, they are going after the small farmers who don't have the money to fight back because why? Because they infiltrated their garden with their corrupt seeds? I mean, it, it, it's just the whole notion of the whole idea behind Monsanto. It, they just smell, to tell you the truth. So why, why a march? Why would you do a march? Why would I do a march? Well, you know, people get upset and they get angry with what's going on in the world and they need an outlet. And they, have, they need a, a, a positive, uh, powerful means to express themselves and to tell and inform the rest of the world about what's going on. There's all sorts of... It's the, it's the, gover it's the corruption, the government corruption. They're all bought out by the corporations. They're trying to mastermind the whole world. And if we don't stand up and say something, we're lost. Look, look at the boat that we're in today. This is our mess. We let this happen in North America. We're going around all naively believing in, in, in the altruism of our government, taking care of us and, and doing what we think they're supposed to be doing on our behalf. And we're forking out our money, our hard-earned uh, taxes and everything else. And, this, and what happened, eh? Wow, you know, thanks to the internet, and um, you know, activist groups like the March Against Monsanto and, and many others, the world is waking up. We're finding out what is really going on here. And this is happening worldwide. This it definitely is. The March Against Monsanto had over 400 marches today in over 50 countries worldwide. It's a huge organization and only getting bigger. So you were sending echoes through downtown Victoria. Tell us what you did. I was shouting, booming, yelling echoes all over the place. Yeah, what did we do? We just tried to get the word out. That's what we did, you know, the best way we know how. Now, did you set up the police escort in advance, or how did that come together? Because you, you, you tied up traffic. Oh, I most definitely did. We most definitely did. And yes, I did uh, uh, phone the, uh, the police, uh, the Victoria police, and they were really awesome to, uh, to provide the escort today and ensure the, the safe uh, uh, march of everybody involved. Thank you to them for that. It's almost as though you have to get the, the mechanism of the day-to-day -to, -day to stop to get people to turn their heads and look. So actually stopping traffic. I love that. I love that too. I love that when you get, when you get a crowd gathering, you can tell people are listening and they're paying attention. There's nothing better. Yeah, so there were hundreds and hundreds of people here today. You organized music, speakers. Was there, what, what, what are you most inspired about from this movement and all the people that you've seen come together for this? Oh gee, it's hard to say. Most inspired about? 
I meet so many great people being involved in this, you know, between the, the single mother that came out with her kid to help and volunteer today, to uh, the, the awesome bands that we have playing here in the background. Uh, I mean, there's just so many really great people that, to, to meet and, and get to know, you know. And what would you want to tell people that are watching in terms of what they can do themselves? What they can do themselves? Well, first thing that comes to mind is you can go to the, uh, my Facebook page, The March Against Monsanto, Victoria, BC. And I have uh, 23 tips on how to fight for food security on your own. You know, it doesn't matter where you live, you can grow your own food, even if it's stringing the plants in front of your window or, or putting them in rows along the wall in your living room. You can, you know, there's so many ways to fight for food security. And if there's one last thing that you could tell the audience at home, what would it be? Don't give up, man. Never give up. We are making strides every day. There, there is so much going on right now that it's, it's, it's monstrous to think about, you know. It seems like baby steps, but you think about how much work and how many people are involved in order to make the legislation that's changing, you know. I mean, isn't that exciting about Russia? You know, I mean, it doesn't really matter how it all came about to me, but the thought of them even making it a criminal offense to be associated with dealing with GMOs, I mean, oh, that's really exciting. So, so what brings you out to the March Against Monsanto rally today? Um, I heard about it on Facebook, and actually, like, I came downtown, pick up, like, this old blue flannel shirt from Patch, and so I'm walking across the street, and I hear a bunch of sound, so I see it. I start yelling, like, screw Monsanto, and, like, you know, just, like, right on. So then I see this guy who I met recently, and I just started walking with them. Wow, so you actually took initiative. You were inspired by what was happening and came forward. I hate Monsanto and GMOs. Like, I'm from Saskatchewan, that's real bad there. Like, farmers will be sued for, like, their entire life and just, like, die with debt. So, you know, like, Monsanto, it's like, I have a lot of hate for them. So you've made changes in your life regarding different foods you eat and just your, your knowledge about uh, what you buy? I try to, but my mom, like, she's pretty right wing and she buys, like, a lot of grocery store BS. But, like, if it's on, like, my terms and I have the money, I'll try and eat healthier, you know, better. So, what brings you here today? Came to the last one, the one before that. Might as well. I don't like Monsanto. They're a big part of the corporate pyramid that we're the foundation of it and it just sits on top of everybody. I don't like it. I want it gone. So, the, there's been a few other ones. Tell us about how things have evolved. More people. Wasn't music at the first one. Yeah, different people every time. And where did you get that drink today? Right over there for free. Is that a group called Food Not Bombs that's handing that? I know a guy who organizes for them, actually. Yeah, they're an alright group of people. And where can you find them? Uh, every Sunday, Harris Green, I think, ain't it? Yeah, but they come to a lot of these sorts of things. And, and they're on Facebook as well. They have a Facebook too, they're on Facebook. They got posters all around. They got a phone number, I can't remember what it is. but. So if there's anything you could tell the audience that's watching, uh, what, what would you want to say? Uh, by the time the year hits 2020, things are going to be really bad. You should probably start preparing with your friends, your family, and your community as much as you can. So what brings you out here today for, for what's happening? I'm, I'm here because I'm against GMOs, genetically modified organisms, um, especially in our food supply. And when did you first hear about GMO foods? I guess about two or three years ago. And have you made changes in your life uh, since learning about them? Yes, my diet's always changing. Um, I'm avoiding corn now and um, I avoid canola oil and lots of things that I've heard have um, GMOs in them. What would you tell people that are watching right now? Well, one thing I feel is whether you believe in God or whether you believe in a creator or what, our human life is a, such a balance. And if you, if you mess with Mother Nature or God's creation by trying to do something different with the genetics, you're really getting into trouble because it's a big experiment. I mean, everything in creation, like with um, when you see a newborn baby, and you think of all the things that have to go together absolutely perfectly in order for that baby to be born as a whole person and not have anything, you know, not be blind or... 
I mean, I know there's the odd thing that goes wrong, but it's a miracle. Birth is a miracle, right? Human life is a miracle. And we're playing with those very genes that God has arranged in such a delicate balance to create human beings, life of all forms. You know, whether it's plants or animals or human beings, it's a very intricate balance. And right now, Monsanto is screwing with that. And the results could be absolutely catastrophic because we don't know what the tiniest little genetic change could do to, the, to people when they're eating the foods. We don't know how that can affect us. Well, yeah. And we've seen dramatic increases in Alzheimer's, various forms of cancer, and it's environmental and we are what we eat largely. Yes, um, we're seeing changes all the time. I mean, even some of the things that they've done with grains in the past, where they're mixing different grains together and they've got them higher in gluten content so that the cakes will rise better. Well, now we have people with extreme gluten sensitivities, some that are celiac, and others who just have problems with their digestive systems where they have like IBS, irritable bowel syndromes, and different sensitivities to foods and environmental things. And it's on the increase. At least from what I can tell, it's on the increase. So are you talking to your friends and family about this as well? Yes, I have. But um, I think a lot of people just believe that our governments will protect us. Um, and is that true in your mind? Do you think governments will protect us or is it up to the individual? Well, governments are not protecting us because these big corporations are paying for them to get in again. I mean, there's so much... Um, money going from corporations into governments. I mean, Monsanto is right into the U.S. government big time. Bunch of people involved in the U.S. government are from Monsanto. So how is the government going to get rid of Monsanto when they're actually influencing them greatly financially? So how would you in inspire people to, to, to change their lifestyle? I'd... I, I, well, just to pay attention to what's happening in the world and um, try to influence what you can. Come to, an, come to a march like this. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. So it's a beautiful day here today. We're standing with Martin with Food Not Bombs. And maybe you could tell us about what's, what's going on today. Um, we're trying to support the push against uh, GMO foods. And so, uh, yeah, we just uh, like serving people who are hungry, but also at protests uh, for a sustainable food system. And, and where did that name come from, Food Not Bombs? It was, um, I believe it was back in the uh, early 80s or something, and they were, had a protest against uh, nuclear power or or bombs, I'm not sure, it was, it was nuclear, and then it said, food not bombs. So it sort of caught on, and uh, it started up for real as a regular serving like in San Francisco after that. So food not bombs is actually all over the place, and it, it's kind of a, a, a solution to kind of stem the tide against the military industrial complex, would you say? Um, well, it's it's pretty broad, like t kind of um, just again against poverty and um, against the military industrial complex and for environmental social justice in general. So, where can people go to find out more about Food Not Bombs here in Victoria? Um, we have the contact info on our on our um, banner there. Yeah, I know if you want to just get Perfect. a shot of that. Yeah, absolutely. Do you guys meet regularly? Yeah, we do a serving every week um, uh, under the tree at Pandora and Vancouver Streets. And we may be moving to downtown, but uh, for the, for now we're there. And Perfect. And people, people. We start on Sundays between 3.30 and 4. Sundays 3.30 to 4? We start between 3:30 and between 3:30 and 4. Okay. Yeah. And of course, you're on social media. I've seen I've seen Food Not Bombs on uh, uh, Victoria has a um, Facebook page 
as well. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for, for your engagement and in inspiring people here today. I've seen a lot of happy faces, so thank you, Mark. What brings you guys out here today? I borrowed my friend's bike and he came down to serve some sushi for all the public here. We heard there was going to be thousands of people, so we did our best to make lots of sushi and support the community the way that we like to do best, through their stomachs. Why are you so passionate about uh, bringing food to the community? I like to do nice things for people and I like to spread, you know, good energy and I think the, the most direct path, regardless to what some women like to think, is still through the stomach. Wonderful. And what brings you out today? Well, I just kind of got involved naturally as um, I was looking for somewhere that would serve fresh, like organic food and for free. And Food Not Bombs was there waiting for me. Was there anything uh, particularly inspiring that you heard from some of the speakers today or something that you saw today? Not really. What about we just, we just, we just got to, we just got told off for taking donations because you're not allowed to take donations or sell anything on public property and this is public property because this is the legislature grounds so we got in trouble oh that's terrible you that's <laughs> Maybe we can get a word from him why we're not allowed to take donations. I don't understand what's wrong with feeding people good, fresh, vegan food. Can we maybe take the camera over to see what he has to say? Sir, do we have any it's response? Under, it's under the contract rules. When the organizers were told they could come on the property, they were told that there can not be any wear sold and no donations given away. Yeah. No donations taken and Nothing sold on the property. That was the agreement by the organizers. If you guys are freelancing here, then we can make you vacate immediately. Okay? Okay. Fair enough? Yep. Okay. okay. Thank you. We are here only to a feed large, the public, but a we... A large part of Food Not Bombs is we get um, a lot of food from organic farms that would otherwise be thrown out, and we, we cook with it, and every Sunday bring it down to... Pandora and Vancouver Street and and give it out to, to whoever would like a fresh soup or salad and that's uh, amazing dessert dessert and Please. I ended up I've got a house nearby where they serve it so I kind of got involved this way yeah, everybody so go now, to Paul's house <laughs> so, so now my now my kitchen's being used once a month to help to help cook um, hey, that's wonderful that's wonderful so what was what would you want to tell the audience that's watching right now? Food not bombs. I would say um, a lot of people are afraid that they can't afford to eat organic food, but you totally can. You, everybody can afford to eat organic food. It's more just you have to be more conscious about what you're buying. And if you tell us that you can't eat this food, you look. You come down on Sunday and we'll give it to you for free, man. <laughs> we'll give it to you. All you got to do is show up and eat it. It's good. It's tasty. I eat it myself. I'm a chef. I'm a cook. You know? Sounds good. That sounds good. Thank you both so much. Appreciate you being here today. Thank you for being here and supporting your community. Likewise. Wonderful. Cheers, guys. Thanks. So we saw you holding your sign and wanted to ask you what brings you out here today? Um, hopefully stop Monsanto, Monsanto and no more GMO. No more GMO. Um, so what, what, were there any specific, were there any particular messages that you found inspiring today from the speakers or just from what you saw? Um, it means a lot to have people with their stores and stuff. Even though they're struggling, they're still getting out there every day and making organic food for the, our, the health of the world. Even though it's not really putting them up there financially, they're still fighting for the cause, doing the right thing. Absolutely. And when you first like started learning about Monsanto and the different things in our food, what, what inspired you to get engaged? My babies. <laughs> I want, I want a healthy future for them. I want his body to be in top shape. 
and myself too. I want to be there to help, you know, hang out with his babies. If there's anything you could tell the audience that's watching, what would you want to say? Go organic. It is absolutely thrilling. The world is coming together. And I would just want to say thank you uh, on behalf of people here in Victoria and the people watching at home. Thank you so much for all the work that you put into this, Laura. It was incredible. Another very successful event. And you are bringing people together. So congratulations. I'm Greg Hill with Freedom Free For All TV. And we are changevictoria.org. We'll see you next time. You know, Adam, when I first got involved 23 years ago on freedom issues in Canada, which are wide and varied, people that were interested were sparsely populated, fractured across the country, and the methods of communication were not nearly as efficient as they are today. And uh, the telephone was, was the major method of communication, and today with people being able to communicate on a daily basis, the issues of freedom and our rights and liberties in Canada have become widespread across the country and well known. Tens and tens of thousands of Canadians now know that there's a risk to their rights and liberties in Canada and they're doing something about it. They're cooperating with people across the country, groups are sharing information together and people from one end of the country to the other now know people they never knew existed 20 years ago and they're doing something about it. And you can see the reaction in governments who are scared because people are not putting up with having the rights and freedoms taken away anymore. And it's been wonderful to see the payoff over the last 20 years from going to sparsely populated meetings with two or three people to now knowing you get tens and tens of people, sometimes over 100 people involved at our meetings. And people care about their rights and freedoms now. And they're doing something about it. And you know, Adam, that's what I call success. I'm David Kevin Lindsay, and you're with Freedom Free For All.